Now we're going to look at spreadsheets of data and how to classify the different types of data we're going to see. So we're going to start out with some vocab on classifying. First of all, we're going to look at individuals. These are the things, the nouns, the items or the subjects under study. So for example, if you have a bunch of people in your study, those are the individuals. Or if you're studying trees or books or dogs, whatever it might be, those are the individuals, the the nouns that participate in your study. One specific type of individual is called a subject. So whenever you have humans, you generally call them subjects, not individuals. The other thing that we're going to look at is variables. These are the characteristics or the adjectives, the things that describe our individuals. So if you have people, they might have a name or a gender or a hair color. Um, if you have a dog, it might be a breed, things like that. So when you have your variables, those are the things that describe your different individuals. And there's a couple different types of variables. The easiest way to break it down is by quantitative and categorical. So start with quantitative. It's whenever you have a numerical value. So if I asked you how many siblings you have, how far you threw the football. Rate something from 1 to 10. That's going to be a quantitative variable because you get a quantity or a number back as your response. Categorical variables are when you have a set of options. So choose one of these four hair colors. Choose uh, whether you like, dislike, or have a neutral feeling towards something. So that would be categorical variables. You can also ask questions that are open-ended, but generally you're not going to be able to uh, do any kind of analysis on that type of data, so we're not going to focus on that right now. Let's practice distinguishing individuals from variables. Height is something you would use to describe someone. How tall are they? So that would be a variable. A student would be a noun, a thing, something you can study, so that's an individual. Kitty, an individual. Hair color, something that describes the kitty or the student, so that's a variable. A person, just like a student, would be an individual. A book, also a noun, individual. A DVD player, when you think about that, it's like, well, how would we study DVD players? Maybe you're looking at a manufacturing process and you're trying to understand how different DVD players come off the line and whether they work or not. They're the thing under study, they're the noun the object, so that would be the individual. Favorite number would probably be describing a person's favorite number, uh, so it would be a variable. Rating of lunch food, how someone feels about the lunch food they're having, so that would be a description of a person, how they feel about that food, that's a variable. And then a classroom. Classroom can be a little bit tricky because you're either describing a classroom, so this classroom, that classroom, that classroom, in which case it's the noun or object under study, or you're asking what classroom are you in right now? Maybe you're asking a person what classroom they're in. So depending on context that might go either direction. Now let's look at the different types of variables and farther distinguish between categorical and quantitative. Gender, we generally break down by male and female. Those are the two categories, and it is not a number, so that's going to be categorical. Income is a number. How much money do you make? So that's quantity, quantitative. Same thing with age. How old are you? Give me a number, quantitative. Number of pets, obviously a number. Hair color, not a number. Generally going to fall into one of several categories. Uh, and you would just name off different colors. Typically on like a survey you might only see three, four, five options for something like hair color. You could do a much deeper analysis and have hundreds of options of very specific hair colors if you want, but even when there's hundreds of options it would still be categories that you're choosing from. Favorite band. Well a band is usually not considered a number so it would fit into a category. Now there's lots and lots and lots of different favorite bands you could choose from, but again, uh, because it's lumping into different groups, lumping into different categories, it's a categorical variable. 
I'm going to skip tax bracket for a second, and then college major. Kind of the same thing as favorite band. There's lots of different college majors you could choose from, but uh, it's going to be a category, not a number. Tax bracket, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with how tax brackets work, it's a range of incomes. So let's say you make between zero and twenty thousand dollars a year. That might be one tax bracket, or twenty to forty thousand might be another tax bracket. Uh, and so the government sets up these different ranges, and they determine how much they're going to tax you based on which tax bracket you fall into. Now it's related to your income, in which case you would think, okay, well the tax bracket is based on how much you make, therefore it's a quantitative variable. However, it's kind of tricky because what we do is we lump people into, based on their income, different categories. So you're in the lowest tax bracket or maybe the next tax bracket. And there's only a set number of tax brackets available. And once you make a certain amount of money, everything above that is the highest tax bracket. So we can take things like numbers and force them into categories. Uh, and we'll do that when we create histograms. So finally, let's look at the setup of a spreadsheet that collects data when you're asking questions like this in a survey. Now, every time you see a new entry, a new row going across in a spreadsheet, that represents a new person that took the survey. So if you scroll down, you'll look at this and see, because this is the first row, there were 50 people that took this survey and answered all of these questions. And every time someone answers the question, you get to see all of their responses going across like this and see what they typed. Across the top, each of these represents one of the questions that we would have seen on our original survey. So a question right here, uh, which character or series do you prefer, corresponds to uh, the question right here, the column right here where people have their answers all show up and whatever answer they choose Batman or Iron Man in this case would be the only two possible responses you can get because people are forced to choose one of those two when you have a column with a number that's going to be a quantitative variable we're getting a quantity back same thing with this this is more limited the scale question one to five this is more open 900 2000 some very large number that someone decided to type in, how many calories you eat. The categorical is where you're more restricted. You're going to see only a small uh, number of possible options, such as Batman, Iron Man, Romney, Obama, Packers, Vikings, yes, no. Things like that are going to be more limited. Now, in this case here, this is a categorical variable where we give you a few more options. But again, you're limited to only a set number of options. And a multiple choice question is going to generate uh, a categorical variable. So quick review, every row is a new person or a new individual uh, that you've collected data on. Every column is a variable, something that describes that person. And it comes down to a question that they were asked or something that you observed.